that I, I thought about and I, I tried to deal with. And, and so I was dealing with that knowing that that really wasn't what God wanted for me. You, you understand, sometimes you guys got to be obedient to the Lord. And so I had reached out because I was trying to figure some things out. And, and I, you know, I had sent out a text and then I got some replies. And then I found myself replying to the replies. And then I'm researching their answer to what I thought should be. And I'm all over the place. And, 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 one of the, and again, I don't know about y'all. I, I, I really don't know about y'all. But I have people that I call. Thank you. That I trust. That I ask. And I go, oh man, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm off base. And, and so I, I went back and forth. And, and one of the pastors that I talked to said, listen, don't let that get you off of what you're supposed to do. That's the things that you have to do, you have to do. And in some things that everybody's not going to agree, everybody's not going to be on that same page. But but what is it? And I had to say, well, let me, let me, let me table this. And get to what God is trying to do with Esau. Amen. And move in a direction that's pleasing to him. And, and I think people are dealing with being afraid. Yes. yes. And fear. Now, I don't care how long you've been in this word. That sometimes there's issues in your life that will cause you to be fearful yes, exactly. and afraid. Yeah. And so I, 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 I said, Lord, where, 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 where do I go? You know. Where do, I, where do I go? How can I give the people the word that they can they can go back and read for themselves and line it up and then put themselves in the same position or predicament and maybe utilize the same skill set to get through? And so I, I started thinking about David. And, and, and David had a a, a life full of challenges yes, and, and ups yes, and downs and, yes. and peril, but, but his beginning problem stemmed from jealousy mm. and envy. Amen. Jealousy and envy will destroy some people and cripple some relationships. Amen. That's, that's what it'll do. I, I, I know personally because I have some friends, and I use the word, they are my friends, and, and, and they are envious. Amen. And people say, well, how can you have friends that are envious? Well, nobody is 10 out of 10, so I don't have to remove the 3 out of 10 that they can never measure up to and then embrace the 7. And just like me, there's some things about me that my friends will say, that's just how Jay is, and, and they, they forgive me for my 3. But they like these other 7 that I bring, but, yeah. but, but sometimes jealousy and envy yes, in a person yes, will. will cause you And so we all must rest in the knowledge regarding our faith. Say that, say that. You, you have to know your faith. In order to rest in it, you, you, you have to know it. And, and you have to understand that there's some things that are going to be allowed that God already knows is happening, going to happen, and the outcome. Amen. And he's putting us in the predicament to, to see what we'll do. And so I'm not going to get into all the different nuances and things that, that David had to endure, but I want to set it up that, that Saul and Saul's servant pursued him. Because Saul was envious of him. Yeah. And, and so they, they were suited, pursuing him, and they were not pursuing him to catch him. They were they was trying to kill this dude. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but if you've ever had someone tell you that so-and-so is looking for you yeah. to kill you, Los Angeles, they have these things called gangs. 
Yeah. And if you kill one of the members, and if they see your color, they are prone to kill you just based upon the color. Yeah. They, they, they will. And so if you are a, 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 in a blue gang, you don't want to be in a red neighborhood. Yeah. And, and so David flees. And, and, and so many things are happening because he's being pursued. He gets down there and, he, and, and he's afraid of the king of death and he acts crazy. He, he, he just is, he, he don't, he's not himself because of the pressures of the enemy. Amen. Amen. And even us as Christians, as, as, as much as we smile, we know that when adverse situations arise, we don't have that same glow. Amen. You don't have that same smile on your face when you know there are some adverse situations, there are some pressures, there are some enemies, there are some injustice. You don't have that same zeal. Amen. Amen. And so certain characteristics can creep in. Not saying that you're not saved, not saying that you don't have faith, but there is a human element to the journey. Amen. There is. There is. I'm quite sure. You know, Mike Tyson said, they asked him when he gets in the fight, he says, when you're fighting the other opponent, do they have a plan? And Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> See, once you get punched in the mouth, whatever your plan was, you reevaluate that plan because getting punched in the mouth wasn't happening in the training. Amen. And so... David is outside of the will of God because you've got to remember they were to go into the land and to do it and kill the occupants in the land, but now he's fleeing, so you know he's not doing what the assignment is. He's, he's fleeing and he's going to a place that they now pursue him. So wait a minute, wait a minute. See, this is what happens. This is what happens when you are afraid or you fearful. Instead of you believing and trusting God, you'll come up with your own strategy, thinking that this is what's going to be best for me, because they are pursuing me, so let me flee, and you go right into the hands of another set of enemies. Jealousy and envy and the will of God are some things that we, we have to play, pay close attention to. And you say, well, that I understand where you're going, but, but what's the scripture for that? Because I, I tell you, I believe this wholeheartedly. You can get up here and have a great uh, a theme or a great story or a great dissertation or a great presentation, but if you don't have any scripture to back it up, as far as I'm concerned, it's a wonderful narrative. It's wonderful to present something. And, they, and so far, that's sounds I'm compelling about David. But, but i got to give you some word to understand that when he was in this situation, what did he do that we can do when we find ourselves in the same situation? That's the beautiful part about the word. So tonight, our sermon is going to come from Psalm 56, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to be reading from the New King. James Version, Psalm 56, verses 1 through 4. We've set all that up. We kind of know where David is. And now he is captured by the Philistines. And he now has to rely on his faith. So put yourself in that particular situation that you were fleeing. Your enemies, and now your enemies may have you captured, may have you in the corner, may still have you on the run. Put yourself in that position and then allow these four verses to minister to you so that you know how to navigate your situation. Amen. Verse 1 says, Be merciful to me, O God, for man will swallow me up, fighting all day, he oppresses me. My enemies would have me all day, for there are many who fight against me almost high. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Yeah. That's the key right there. That's the key right there. Whenever I am afraid, 
I will trust in you. And verse 4 says, in God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? My sermon title is, the journey is yours, the battle is his. The journey is yours, the battle is his. Here in verse 1, we see that David is calling on God because of the predicament that he is in. So he's calling on, on God. But notice what he says. He don't say, have grace. He says, have mercy. He says, have mercy to me. Have mercy on me. And we know mercy is when God gives you that path for what you should have received based upon what you've done. So he's setting it up and saying, look, I know I have been out of your will. I know I have done some things that have gone contrary to your word. And, and I, I've been confused. But what I need you to do, oh gracious one, is have mercy on me. So he cried out for mercy. Mercy is forgiving you, but holding the punishment you justly deserve away from you with compassion. Some of us cry out for mercy. For some of us, we're really not living up to what God has called us to be or to do, and we do need mercy. Have you ever noticed in a courtroom when a person has been involved in some type of crime and it's time for judgment, they say, I'd like to throw myself what? On the mercy of the court. Meaning I'm already guilty of this, but if you could just have some compassion on me, I would greatly appreciate it. And then David is no different. He said, oh, be merciful to me. Oh God, have you found yourself in a situation where you need to say, you know what God, I haven't been living and doing what you have called me to do or what I confess to be. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on my situation. And David is in this particular mindset because he is in constant danger. And if you are in constant danger, man, you, you, you want mercy. You want, you want forgiveness for some things. Yes, yes. But you, but, but he notice he, he he calls out on God, who has what a lot of mercy, because he can't call on us, because you know us, we 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 some hard people when it comes to mercy. You know, you know, we want an eye for an eye. We want you to go through the things that I've gone through. We all have been there when something has not gone your way. You want that other person to feel the same thing. But I'm telling you that mercy wins. Mercy wins. Have mercy on me. Forgive for what I have done and be merciful for me. But God, he knew was merciful. So he says, why would he ask for mercy? He says, for man would swallow me up. For man would swallow me. What, what, how would man swallow him up? Well, if we look at the word swallow him up, we can look at that as a, as a raging beast. You ever see a beast as it's about to attack, to swallow someone? It pants, it breathes. There's an aggressiveness about that beast that, that not only puts fear in you, but it lets you know that whoever is coming, they mean business. They ain't no plan when somebody is going to swallow you up. And he knows that the people who are after him have, are out to destroy him. So he says, have mercy on me, God, for man would swallow me up. Imagine your day filled with everyone walking around looking at you with an aggressive nature to take you out. This is a mindset that he is dealing with on the daily basis because he is being pursued at both ends. He is now captured, but he is now not forgot who to call when he needs him the most. That's what we have to do. That's what you have to do. That's what I have to do. Sometimes you just got to stop and call him and say, Lord, this is too much for me. And sit down and allow God to work on your behalf in front of you, behind you, and all sides around you. So he says to him, he said, be merciful 
to me, O God, for man will swallow me up fighting all day. He oppresses me. He fights all day. Why? Because when you use the word uh, oppresses me, you're talking about pressing down somebody that's over. In other words, if you were playing basketball, they would call it a full court press. Meaning no matter which way you go, here they come. As soon as the ball goes there, they collapse. The ball goes there, they collapse. And they got the whole court covered. You don't have a chance to dribble. You don't have a chance to pass. Because everybody is panting and breathing to swallow you up to get what you have so that you are not a victorious. And he's faced with that. Because he says he's fighting all day oppresses me. Can you just imagine being chased and there's nowhere to go that you feel secure? I can't go back there. I, I, I know people around here know who I am, so let me act crazy. Amen. Let me throw, throw I, I, know, I, know, I know a lot of people here probably haven't, haven't gone through this because we're, we're good Christians. But some of us jacked up folks have had to, I, I, I know personally, I, I, I can understand what, what he went through. I remember being in a tough neighborhood in San Francisco. I was walking to a comedy club one night, and, and I shouldn't have walked, but I'm cheap, and I didn't want to pay for the, for the taxi. And I saw some dudes coming in at me, and they, they looked like they were about to take me out. And, and so I didn't know what to do. I was by myself. So I tried to act like I was the police. Put my collar up and I said, yeah, I'm crossing the street now. He's coming from the west down the side. I don't know if they heard me and got scared, but they stayed on their side. I stayed on my side. And I took the cab back after the club. I heard that. So he says, fighting all day oppresses me because he has to be on constant alert. See, this is what happens when you get out of the will of God. You, you know, I told y'all that the, so far up until a couple of the, up, to, up until the anniversary, the things were really going well. The offer was coming in. I was able to pay all the bills. And then all of a sudden, I got in front of God and got in some trouble. And I said, Lord, how come I'm out here? He said, because you got in front of me. Get back to where you were, where you were comfortable allowing me to leave. And you followed. And I said, it didn't take many lessons for me to understand. Let me stay in my position. Let me stay in my position. Position. Let me stay where I'm comfortable. Verse 2 says, my enemies would hound me all day. So, so imagine now being in a place that you're not supposed to be, that you find yourself, and the people who are in charge or prison guards or, or whoever has, has restricted your movement are um, messing with you all day, messing with your mind. You know, just talking bad about you. What does that do to you? What does that What does that do to your mind? It 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 it, it, it will cause you to dig deeper and trust more that God will bring you through this because you really should be there in the first place. And if we learn the lesson when we are out there on the ledge, once we get back onto the permanent ground, we. Then he brings you through that one. Then he 
go, will you bring me through this one? Then he brings you through that one. Then you ask him again, will you bring me? At what point will you understand that he will if you will? Yeah. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, my enemies will yeah. hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me. Oh, oh most high. They, they, they listen. When you realize that your life has greatness in it, yeah. this territory that comes with it. Yeah. Let, let me say that to y'all again. When you realize that your life matters, when you realize your own importance in him and that he values you, this is what comes with it. The adversary comes to see. That's what they do. They ain't seeking you if you're on the sideline. They're only dealing with you if you're in the game. They're only dealing with you because you have come through some things. They only deal with you because we have seen your strength in the face of adversity. But if you ain't done nothing, if you ain't trying to do nothing, ain't nobody bothering you. So when you are faced with these challenges as David was, it's because greatness was on his life. He just had to go through some things so he got to the plateau. He wouldn't forget how he got there. He wouldn't forget how what he went through to get there. And he would not forget So you say, well, how, how is that the answer? Well, this is the beautiful thing. See, when it comes to the scriptures, you don't have to make nothing up. Yeah. You don't have to make nothing up. I'm going to read it again, and then I'm going to go to I'm going to go to verse number three. This is what it says. It says, be merciful to me. He's asking God to be merciful to him. And he says, oh God, for man, talking about man, he, man is challenging. You can't fight me. I'm fighting all day. And this is the pressure that's against me because of who I am in you. And I know I kind of slipped, but I'm, I'm back now because, yeah. you know, one thing about prisoners, I don't know about y'all, y'all have family members, but if you ever have a family member incarcerated, they will write you the most scintillating, tantalizing letters ever, spirit filled. But the day they get out of jail, you get them to come to service school. I'm telling you the truth. I've seen it with my own eyes. But he says, my enemies would hound me all day. For there are many who fight against me, O most high. He's smart. David is smart. He knows to call on God. And he knows that he can call him most high because he knows where he sits. When you are in an adverse situation, yeah. do you look down or do you look up? I'm telling you, you better look up. Why? Because that's where the most high is. That's where your strength comes from. Your strength comes from on high. And you can't say it unless you believe it, understand it, and know it for yourself. And the reason why he says almost high because he knows God dwells in heavenly places. So all of that is in the scriptures. And all of this is in your life. All of us have had some of these journeys. Some of us are in these journeys now. Some of us wake up every day right now dredging the day because they have to fix some of these things. Some of us, some of us wake up the same way we went to bed, depressed, fearful, yeah. afraid. Yeah. And I'm saying to you, just like David, you can be fearful and you can be afraid. That is a human nature, spirit, thought. But guess what? It should not consume your mindset. Yeah. You should live in fear and you should not live in being afraid. Why? Because verse number three tells us why. It says what, whatever, whenever, whenever, whenever yeah. I am afraid, I will trust in the pastor. Yeah. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in my husband. Whenever I'm trust in the musician. Whenever I'm afraid, I'm going to trust in the songs of the praise and worship leaders. No, it says whenever I am afraid, I will trust in who? You, the one that I called out to. Don't you got to understand that your situation is nothing more than a situation, but God has a solution to your situation, and his solution is trust. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. You got to trust. So it says whenever I'm afraid. Didn't I tell you all this whole journey is personal? I'm telling you. This is a personal journey. 
eternity. He says, whenever he didn't say my children are afraid, my family, my people under my command, the, 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 the people of my, my county or city, he says, whenever I'm afraid, I am the example. And how could David be afraid? David who killed lions. David who uh -huh. killed bears. David who killed Goliath. David who yeah. walked around with the sword of the man he yeah. killed. How could he be afraid? Because the human side says, fear does resonate when you see what's in front of you. Yeah. But you gotta take what's in front of you, block it to the side, and trust in him. Yes. Yes, yes. And trust. Yes. But the only way to build up your trust is you got to have knowledge of him. The only way to have knowledge of him is you got to go through some things to see that knowledge activated. The only is have something in your life that the enemy is trying to take back, snatch out of your life because he don't want you to have it. That's how you get there. That's, that's the word of God. This man, it ain't just simple. It's, it's right there. It's right there. It, 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 it's right. It's right there. You're sitting there. You're sitting there waking up every morning on the edge of the bed, dredging the day, and all you got to do is whenever I'm afraid, I got to have enough sense to take that fear. Shift it and put trust in place of fear. When we are afraid, we come up with plans all on our own. He didn't do that. He said, well, I'm afraid. I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to trust in what I, I, I know about you. That's what he said. That's what the word of God tells us. That's what this is. Even though this happened before, 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 before any of us got here, they were dealing with the same thing in that day that we're dealing with now. Enemies, envy, jealousy, pursuit, and deals with all of that. And he says, even though be a man of carriage, me a man of principle, me a man who's going to go off and do some great things eventually in my life, when I'm afraid, I'm going to trust in him. And this is why he can trust in him. Verse 4 brings it home. And if it don't bring it home for you, you might want to go back and hit this message and hit repeat a couple of times. Here's how it brings it home. It says, in God, I will praise what? His word. In God, I have put my trust. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I will put my trust in him. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. And because I will put my trust in his word, and I will put my trust in God, I will, I shall, I can deal with fear. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? Don't you understand that the very person that's giving you grief, that's chasing you or pursuing you, can't do nothing to you unless God allows it to happen. And if you're calling out to him and it's part of his will, ain't nothing they can do to you. Don't you know that Dr. King was a civil rights icon and he was assassinated for some kind of way? God is out. 
I watched the sermon the other day. And the preacher was preaching on something, and, and it was at the beginning of the pandemic. He, it. he said, I have a 2100 seat church, and I'm the only one here. Because God was trying to get somebody's attention. Now, I don't know if you heard or not, or you paid attention to it. But I, I, I paid attention to it. And the reason why I paid attention to it, because I realized we were moving at warp speed. Yes. And that slowed all of us yes. And you had to depend on God because nobody knew how it was going to be. And I don't tell you, I was fearful to let everybody else. I went down the board. I bought, I don't know, 300 rolls of toilet paper. I wanted to have 10 rolls for every member of the church. That's why they all had toilet paper back then. Not a person. We get it. Johnson, I 
give you a pass. Uh, 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 y'all know what happened out there. Because of his title. Every time he came, I never said a word. Because I knew who he was, man. He was the vice president. I can't say nothing. He already told me who he is, man. Since you find that. So, but before then, I was talking about him. And, and that's, that's how life is. We get caught up in all these titles and think that we got to walk around on the edge of the guy. And you're right, Terrell. Maybe I should have kept talking about it. But I knew that. So I did that. Talk about this. All right. So the door of the church is open. You want to be a member of our church? Just fill out this card and answer two questions. Why two questions? Because they're important. Why do you want to be a member of the church? And if you don't know, then you should join. And if you are a member of the church, you should ask yourself, why am I a member of the church? And if you don't know, you should leave. As simple as that. Oh, I can't believe he told y'all to leave. Why? Some of y'all been sitting in the same church for 30 years. Why? Ain't growing, ain't doing nothing. Just showing up and sitting in the same seat. And if somebody sitting in that seat, you're going to catch an attitude to the 13th power. And they're going to see the other side of salvation that you try to suppress. I know I'll tell the truth. But anyway. So, anyway. Plus, if you come here, they saw we got 41 chairs. Ain't nobody ever said it. Tell that right now. You get your you can be the first one. Like these three over here, ain't nobody ever said that. These two right here, ain't nobody said that. And them back two rows, ain't nobody ever said over there. You can have that. You can have the whole world. Every Tuesday night at uh, 7 o'clock at our Tuesday Town Hall, uh, like I said, Terrell Wright taught us for the last Tuesday. And this Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll be online. Um, Minister Cecil will teach uh, for two days in a row something he said that the Lord gave him that was on his heart and he wanted to share it and he needed two weeks so we just put him back to back and then the following Tuesday which is like the 22nd so we will not have Tuesday town hall because it's vacation, Thanksgiving I'm taking my wife out of town for vacation so she can get away we're going to see Sister Evans up in uh, West Virginia it will be the Lord's will yeah.
music will lead us in praise and worship. And DeRosa gets a, a weekend off from us, but she'll be back the following week, Lord willing. Father God, we're so thankful for those who are watching online. I'm thankful for my wife who was back there. I think the sound of TV went down and she was able to get us back up. So we thank you for the people who are watching online. Thankful for her professionalism. Thankful for those who have come out, our friends and our members. Bless us now, Father, we depart from this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. That's what y'all. Yeah. Let me uh. Let me uh. So why y'all are using? Just your maps. Two more fences done. And there's nothing you can do. So I had to go this way. So why did you do that? Look. You know what? Hold on. Let me. Oh, okay. Look. Turn this on. Well, at least you can still get on. Okay. Okay. 